We have to speak about what is called the Management Plane Protection or MPP. Now this is a embedded feature within CPPR, so it's only supported by CCP CPPR. Another reason to configure CPPR or control plane protection and not control plane policing because it also allows for this feature to happen. Now this feature is, sc is scoped with a specific use case in mind. It's going to allow the router to control over which physical interfaces can it receive inbound management traffic. So you're gonna, you can go on a router, for example, if you pick up router 2 or router 3, let's say, you can go on router 3 in here and configure MPP saying that you allow SSH traffic to the router so you allow SSH traffic to the router only if that for management purposes as well, not for transiting traffic, but SSH traffic destined to the router, because that's management plane, only if that traffic is received by the router inbound on FA0013, for example. So it doesn't matter if the SSH traffic is actually destined to the loop back of the router. With this feature, we control on which physical interface does that management protocol traffic enter the router inbound on? It doesn't matter if it's actually destined to the IP address of that physical interface or to the IP address of the loopback. It doesn't matter what's the destination IP address of the management traffic. With this feature, you only control over which physical interface does the router accept that specific management plane traffic destined to itself. So a couple of useful links about CPPR configuration understanding and also about uh, MPP configuration and understanding. Even if it's for qu code 12.4t, it's because in that code, Cisco came up with the control plane protection feature as an upgrade to the control plane policing. So still most of the functionality of those two features are described still in those documents, which are for 12.4t code. Otherwise, in the 15x iOS code documentation, you're going to mainly find only configuration examples, but not the detailed explication expl explanations of how those features work, what is their scope, and how do you configure them. So in the configuration of guide of 15x, you, you should only find in general configuration examples, but not the explanation of those technologies and why they even came up with to begin with. Like for example, if you want to configure, let's say quickly to show an example uh, of MPP because that's going to be fast. So let's go in here. If you want to configure that MPP on router 2. So before we do that, let's go back on the diagram. Let's make sure that currently I can connect to router 3. Let's, let's, let's pick up telnet traffic, for example. Let's make sure that initially, by default, I can send telnet traffic to the router from both router 1, so entering the FA0013 interface, and also from router 2, so entering the FA0023 interface. Let's confirm that functionality to begin with. Let's go on router 1 and router 2, and telnet to router 3. So router 1, let's say telnet to router 3 is loopback. Okay, it's connection refused, but it, uh, let's enable the router 3 transport and put back again. So let's say transport input, both telnet and SSH. Transport input, telnet and SSH. Let's go now on router 1. Make sure we can tell it to router 3. Okay, let's go to router 3 and also remove the filter which drops TACAX traffic real fast. And now this. Here we go. So let's go back and tell it to router 3. Again from router 1 and router 2. 
tech x and tech x and there we go exit like us from router 2 telnet router 3 is loopback tech x and tech x and there we go so this is the confirmation that management traffic of telnet by default can be received can be is going to be accepted by the router on all of its physical interfaces now let's go into npp configure router tree so that it's going to accept management traffic of telnet only inbound on this interface so only from this direction which means that now telnet traffic from router 2 should no longer work but this one from router 1 should be okay should work So if you follow up on the configuration examples in here, uh, management plane, where is that? There we go. You go under control plane host, and then you say simple management interface and the physical interface that will restrict management protocols. And you say on that interface, I allow which inbound protocols. So with this command you're saying, I'm gonna allow at this point only management traffic in about on that interface and which protocols are going to be allowed so looking at my, at my diagram i want to allow only tenant traffic to be received in about on this interface and not on the other interface of fs 23 so let's do that let's go on router 3 let's say control plane post And then management interface, and then you put the physical interface number of FA0013, and you say allow which protocols FTP, HTTP, HTTPS, and so on. I'm going to say Telnet. So at this point, I'm going to allow only Telnet traffic to come inbound on this interface and no other protocols in from that list are going to be allowed inbound on a router on any of the interfaces because by default all all of these management protocols are allowed to come in any packets of those protocols are allowed to come in on the router from any inbound physical interface but as long as i configure this entry it means that everything else is going to be denied so let's first now see that I can still turn that from router 1. So now at this point I allowed only Telnet to be received inbound on this interface. So let's see that Telnet from router 1 still works but not from router 2. So on router 1 there we go TACAX and TACAX Exit, but from router 2, I should not be allowed to do that. Now. There we go. It's a silent drop. If you go on router 3 now, and you say, it even logged them as they say, management interface feature enabled on control plane host pad. Okay, that's because it got enabled. But if you say show control plane, show control plane, host, features the management feature was activated on whatever and if you say show control plane counters then in host you have packets processed dropped and errors and there you have four package drops which confirms the dropping of my telnet session from router 2 and let's also confirm that ssh now doesn't work in any direction so ssh should not even work inbound on this interface because i'm allowing only telnet traffic and only inbound on fs 13 so likewise ssh should not work from router 1 
or from router 2, of course. Let's go on router 1 and try to SSH. Even though on the VTI lines, SSH is being, of course, allowed. And there we go. Let's confirm from router 1. Because if it doesn't work from router 1, it's not going to work from other routers. SSH minus L TACAX. Doga is never going to work. Likewise from router 1. From router 2, it's not going to work as well. And you should see on router 3 that the number of drop packets in host sub-interface have been increasing because I'm dropping SSH packets from both router 1 and router 2. And anyway, I have 12 packets being dropped now, and the SSH session on router 1 has gave up, likewise on router 2. But now if I'm gonna go in my configuration and add also SSH, allow tenant and SSH, then at this point I should be able to receive SSH traffic inbound on that interface, which means now SSH traffic should also work from router 1, but, also, but not from router 2 still. So router 1 should be able to successfully SSH to router 3 now. There we go. But router 2 still should not be able to do that. And as you can see, the destination of my packet is actually the loopback of the router. But it doesn't matter because this feature of management plate protection doesn't restrict what is the destination of my tenant or SSH session, but on which physical interface is are the packets allowed to enter the router. So router 1 SSH worked as expected, but router 2 SSH should give up. And probably I should see, based on the pattern I've seen so far, I should see four more packets being dropped because I have only one SSH, SSH session being dropped, which is a run from router 2. So I should, see, I should see 16 packets in there now. And here we go, 16 packets being dropped in a host, subplane, and router 2's connection didn't work, it timed out. As you can see, this, this is a silent drop because I don't receive any kind of uh, exclamation marks or something. It's a silent uh, drop.